Praise God. Praise God. For a wonderful day and what a wonderful message. Can I say you give a Pastor Mark Guy another hand for that Hallelujah. wonderful message? Great message. The tongue on the poison tongue. That was very good and I hope everyone it's a big subject and it's rampant that a lot of people don't know what will come out of the mouth. What comes out of your heart is what will come out of your mouth. So a lot of that that comes out of people, you can look at their heart and you can tell what kind of heart they have by some of the things that come out of their mouth. Realize it or not, we are walking around with this tongue. And sometimes the tongue could be like a fangs, like a fangs of a snake. And believe it or not, we're walking around with a weapon. The tongue is a weapon, a weapon of mass destruction. Yes, this yes, little red yes. muscle, it's a muscle yes. in your mouth, can cause more damage. Is it? it can cause like a fire, it can make things just grow and grow and grow. Like a fire starts out small, yes. and then it can just grow and grow. Like somebody out in the forest in, in California, they might just be smoking a cigarette and just drop it. Yes. And that little fire yes. can just start to grow and grow and do a lot of damage, just like words can do a lot of damage to people. Like she said, slander mm -hmm. and foul mouth and using bad words. Yeah. It just cuts like a knife. Yeah. And a lot of, none of us are perfect. None of us are perfect. Yeah. I mean, we cannot tame the tongue. Mm -hmm. There are parts of the Bible that like a horse. A horse is big, but you have to put a bridle. You can put a bridle on your tongue yeah. so you can control what you say like you control a horse. As big as a horse is with just a little bridle yeah. that goes across his mouth and you pull it this way or that way and you can make that horse go whichever way you want to go, yeah, just yeah. like you can help do some, that same technique to let your tongue, but you know, the Spirit, if you have the Spirit, the Spirit, the Holy Ghost will tell you what to say, but sometimes none of us are perfect in here. No. I count the, how many people in here are perfect on one hand, let me see, zero, Amen. no one Amen. in here is perfect, Amen. but we must try, we must try to, um, and then like she said, what would God do, or what would Jesus, what would Jesus say? So, um, you know, it was a very good message, and we all sometimes, you know, make mistakes, and we all got to get a temper, or we get upset. Sometimes, you know, it's not the person's fault, just like the girl that bumped into her. It's not, um, it's not always, you know, intentional, but you got to learn, you can't go back and apologize. If you do something wrong or say something to somebody, and you get a chance to rectify it by telling them you're sorry, or you might go home and think about it, and then your conscience will bother you, or you'll be convicted, yes. and you won't be happy, and it will make you so much more happy once you see that person, and you tell them you're sorry, and they yes. accept your apology, and it make you feel so much bigger, so much better, because you can actually get ill, you can get sick in your body from some of these things that you hold in, and God knows your heart, and um, so getting back to the resurrection um, of Jesus, I used to hear, when I first started going to church, I used to hear some people would say that they was, um, you know, Jesus got whooped. They whooped him. They spit on him. They, you know, did all kinds of bad things to him, called him all kinds of names. They put the nails in his hands and his feet. And I used to hear people say they was glad. They was happy. They was glad that it happened. And I couldn't understand why they were saying that they was glad that that happened. But after I, you know, matured a little bit more, and because of the reasons why, I mean, then they say, I'm saying, why are you so, I'm getting mad at them for saying, you know, they killed Jesus and, you know, and this, it was for our redemption. And um, I just um, didn't like hearing them say these bad things because I thought Jesus, you know, when I was young or growing up and learning who Jesus was, I thought he was a pretty cool dude. And then when they said, started saying that stuff, you know, they were I'm glad that, you know, he got on the cross and then I understood why. But then they say, um, Jesus did not, they didn't kill him. They didn't take his life. He gave his life. He gave it up. And he, and then um, it took me a while to understand what they meant by he gave up the ghost. You know, he, he gave up his ghost, which means that he died, right? That means what they were talking about. But I'm just glad that he did for us to be reconciled back to God. Because ever since Adam sinned, we're all in sin. But God, Jesus died on the cross that we may worship him and we can have everlasting life. We must repent of our sins. We all sin once in a while. And once we do, Jesus died on the cross so that we can be forgiven for those sins. Amen. And that's my time. Amen. God bless you. Have a rest. Amen. A wonderful rest of your resurrection Sunday.